So I'm going to show you how to use Photo P to create a Shepherd Fairy inspired layered collage. So the first thing to do is open up Photo P on the internet, type it into your browser and just open it up. I'm going to make a new file which is essentially the piece of paper we're working on. I'm just going to choose this preset Facebook event size and I'm going to increase the um, resolution to a bit higher than 72. Okay, so if I just do file open and I've got recent images that I've just opened up before doing this so that they'll be in the recent images and easier to find. If you've not just opened them, they'll be somewhere inside your files or your Google Drive where you can search for them. So this is my inspirational images and then I've got a few patterns and some torn paper. Okay, I'm going to open all of those, and those will open up along there. I also need to get a portrait, <coughs> which I thought I'd just opened, but it wasn't in recent, so I might have to search for it in Drive. Let me just check that it didn't go there. So if you hold down control while you're clicking on them, you can get a few different images at once. So I am going to have to look in my drive. I know where it is. So I'm going to look in my year 11 folder. I'm just going to get my... So in here I'm just going to get one of these photos. So I'm going to use this one. Okay, so if we look at these images here, I'm going to try and make a stylized portrait like this painted one to make images like this. So if I get the portrait back again, and I'm just going to crop it. In fact, yeah, I'll crop it just a minute. So the crop tool's over there. You just grab it. And then you can say yes to the crop. Okay. So we're going to try and cut her face up into sections of colour, like here. So if I go to Image, Adjustments. levels oh no sorry it's not on there is it it's just a little bit different to photoshop i just need to remember what it's on i'll just pause this while i have a go Okay, I found it. So it's on image, adjustments, posterize, and it turns your image into layers of color. So you can increase the layers, which gives you more of a photographic, the, num the higher the number of layers, the more photographic your image looks. So you're gonna have to play with this here to get it into the amount of colors that you want it to be in. So actually, that looks quite good. Although I think that perhaps a few less would work better. So it depends how stylized you want it. If you do have Photoshop, do it on the cutout. That's quite nice, actually. So we'll say OK to that. So remember, we're trying to make it look like this here. So you can see these faces are cut into three or four colors. So I've posterized it and made it into three or four colours, although there's a few more colours there, isn't there? Okay, so I need to select 
the girl away from her background. So I'm just going to use the magic wand. In fact, I might try and use the quick selection tool and see if that works. Quick selection tool should let you click on an object. It's just doing something at the moment. So it's just frozen for a second. Okay, so I can click on an object and it should let me select her. And I am on add to over here. So every time I click, it's adding to my selection. So I've nearly got all of her. I think this orange and green in the hair looks a little bit out of place, but you can fix that later. Okay, so I've got her selected from her background. So now if I do select inverse and press delete, then I've got her on her own and I'll just do select, deselect. So now I'm going to take her into my new project. So if I drag the background layer and drop it into new project and it goes blue, then you can see that I've taken her into this new image and she's actually got some uh, grey with her. I'm not sure why this is frozen now. It's doing an image analysis again. It's probably because I opened up a lot of things at once. Okay, I'm just going to use the rectangular selection tool. If it's not there, it could be hiding behind. If you right click on any tool, you can see there's other tools underneath it. So it could be an ellipse, but it usually shows as a rectangle. So I'm selecting it and I'm going to press backspace to delete it. So if I get the move tool and I'll just deselect that. So I should be able to move her around. Oh look, she came with some other stuff as well. So let's just delete those extra bits. We did remove the background, so it's strange that she came with all of that anyway. Okay, so we should be able to move her around, put her anywhere in the picture. And we can change the size of her as well. Oh look. <laughs> I'll just get rid of all these extra bits that we don't need. So I'll draw on here, press backspace, draw this on, press backspace, and then I need to get that one at the top, the extra one. I need to just deselect. So there's an extra bit there, which I'm going to remove. Okay. So to change the size of her, if we wanted to, we can move her around. So you can do edit, transform, scale. You must hold down the shift key while you do it, otherwise you might end up um, changing the width of her, like the height and the width, the proportions wouldn't stay the same. So I'll just show you. So if you don't hold down shift, it's possible to stretch her too wide or too thin. So I'll just try and put it where I think it should go. Okay, you can also move her around, change the size of her later. So remember, we're trying to make an image that looks like these. So I've collected some patterns as well. So if we look at, say, this pattern here, so I need to drag this pattern into that picture. So I'm going to grab the background and drop it into the new project. And you can see that it's gone very small because it's obviously a small resolution image and it's on top of the image of the girl. So if I want to make it <coughs> go behind, I can just click and drag the layers around. Uh, so make sure I'm on the layer that I want to do stuff to. So it's dark gray, so I am. I'll do edit, transform, scale. And I'll hold down the shift key so that I can increase the size of that pattern. So I'll just put it that big and say yes. So keep looking back at the images that are inspiring you. So the patterns are kind of in sections sometimes. They're sometimes overlapped by text. So this pattern here has got kind of torn sections on top of it. So I did collect some torn paper, which I can also drag into the image. 
that I'm working on. So you can see here I've got the torn paper, but it came with some bits that I might not want it to have. <coughs> so if I just make it, a, uh, you can actually make the whole screen bigger by doing Control Plus. And if you hold down the space bar and you're on the move tool, you can move around easily. So I can just do Control Plus again, hold down the space bar, click and drag to see the bit I want to see. So I'm going to use the magic wand, which is behind this one, to select this colour. When you click on it, it just gets, if this is unticked, it will get all the grey in the whole picture. And I'm also going to add to it, so make sure you're on add to. So it says unite, take away. So the unite is the add to. So I'm going to click on the white bit. Oh, I didn't want to get that. I'll just do undo. So it's got all the white bits in the picture. So if I just tick contiguous, it's only going to get the white bits that touch these white pixels. It's not going to get any of the others that are anywhere else. So I'm going to click on these as well and select all of them and these. If it's a bit slow with selection, you can increase this. So it will get pixels that are 30% like the ones I'm clicking on now and it should make the selection a bit quicker. So I just got a bit of the background that I didn't want. Oops, I think I've done it again. So zoom in if it uh, is a bit difficult, it makes it a bit easier. Okay, so I'm going to select the inverse and press delete. I don't know if it did select the inverse. I think this might delete it all. Yes, it did. <coughs> okay, I've not quite got the, it selected yet. So I just need to keep adding to my selection. I might try the other way of selecting it. I might try doing the object selection. It could be quicker. I seem to have made a bit of a mess here. So I'm going to click and draw in here and try and get this whole area. Hmm. Theoretically, it should be very easy to get this. I'm going to go back on the history. So the history is over here. These are all the things that you've done. And I've been trying to select this for quite a long time. So I'm just going to go back a few steps and select the inverse now. So I think when it got those lines along this, that way. Okay, so I've deleted bits of the middle. So now, what I can do, if I just do Control minus, I can see the whole thing bigger, uh, smaller, or zoom out on it. So I'm going to move this torn paper over to here and I'm just going to change the size of it. Edit, transform, scale. So I can make it look, hold down the shift key, like there's torn edges over the top of that. Oops, I might also do it here. Okay. <laughs> you have to say yes to any transformation. So I'm just clicking the tick and then I'm just going to move it up a little bit with the cursor key. Okay, so if you look, it looks like there's torn edges sort of around the pattern that's here and then it's filled with other things. So I have covered... I've covered it and I've made the background a bit grey and the grey is in keeping with what's on her face. So I'm just going to get rid of the grey paper because it's going a bit slowly and get rid of the picture of the girl. Okay, so I've got a few more patterns. So that's, oh, okay. <coughs> Let's take this pattern, put it into the background so we're adding a bit more colour. So it's gone beneath the girl. That's okay because we'd like it to be there. 
I'm just going to move it over to here and do edit transform scale and I'm going to make it bigger hold down the shift key so I might this time try to put this pattern in the shape of a tear which is a bit hard to do but I'll show you how to do it okay so now I say yes to any transformation so if I now make a copy of this layer so I will duplicate layer by right clicking and then I will just put it on top of that other one now if I select this layer by clicking with the magic wand and I'll click on the edge as well hold on a second I'm just gonna move this up because I'm going to try and cut this out in the shape of that tear. So if I just line it up with it a second, then I can do that. Okay, so if I go back to this layer that's on top, <coughs> get the magic wand, and I'll select this whole area and this whole area by clicking on the magic wand, then I can go to this layer now. So the selection is now on this layer. And I can go to layer, new layer via copy, which gives me, if I hide that layer and hide this one, you can see that I've got a torn section with that pattern on it. So I can do edit, transform, rotate, and I can move it. And so I've got a torn kind of pattern here that's in that shape and I can transform the size of it edit transform scale so I can warp it if I want to and make it quite wide and um, so I can just build up the layers in that way you could also flip it if you want to you can drag it across this way and we could put it over here and we could say yes to that you can also change the colour of layers. So this blue is very different to all the colours that are in here. So I might do image, adjustments, hue saturation. <coughs> this will change the colours in the whole image. So if I move around, and it's only going to do it to that layer because only that layer is highlighted. So I've, if I move it around and try to pick a colour, that's already within the image, it might look a bit better. So you can make the colour more intense. So if I try and maybe pick that salmon -y colour, there's another way of doing it. You can say colourize and it will choose the colour that is here. So if I pick if I pick this colour instead, so I can actually select a colour that's within the image and say okay. And then untick this. Untick colorize. Oh, it's still gone blue. Oh, maybe that's because this is not in the middle. I think we'll do that again. We'll just say no to that. And if we do image adjustments, hue saturation, I should now be able to tick colorize. And it will just make it the colour that I have here. So it actually needs to be more intense and maybe a bit lighter. And then it will go that colour. Okay, so we say okay. So again, we'll keep going back. I'll get rid of this one. We'll keep going back to looking at these to help us develop it further. So you're just building up and layering so you can gather images off the internet like bits of money or bits of writing from places. You can gather receipts and things to put on top or labels, whatever they are. You can also type. So there's a type tool over here. And this is the size of the text. This is the colour of the text. So we could choose um, a colour that's here. Actually, perhaps maybe we should choose this dark colour here, but you can choose any colour. You could choose, say, this yellow. And we'll say OK. 
and this is the size of the text. I want it to be quite big and this is the font. So if you just click on this arrow, you can see what font you're going to be working with. And it should show you a preview here. It might take a while to load up. So they're just coming on here now. So you can see I quite like this one. So I'm going to go for destroy. And you can type in a size here because that's actually quite small. So I'm going to type in 300 here. <coughs> as soon as I click, on the picture, I now get a cursor, so I could start typing. You can press return to go onto another line, or you can make a new type layer so that you can move things around. So you have to say yes to any type that you've done, and then if you're on the move tool, you can move that type around. <coughs> you can also, if you double click on it, uh, sorry, if you double click on the T, you can um, make it bigger, you can change the colour of it. So you can do edit, transform, scale, and stretch it around a bit. So you could say yes, or make it bigger because it wasn't big enough. And then you just say yes to it. You can also add effects like, so the effects are here. You can also add a shadow because it's not very clear on there and you get to see what the shadow looks like um, when this comes up, a preview comes up so you can make the shadow go far away if you want to or you can make the shadow be close. So these are all the controls. This changes the angle of where the shadow is so you can choose which side of the word it's on. I quite liked it where it was. Um, I'll just turn it up a bit and you can change it so it's a bit fuzzier if you move the spread around on the size you can change as well and you can also change the color of it um, or change the mode of it sorry so there's lots of controls available on it so you have to say okay if you like it there's also something called modes which is quite good which i'll show you so I'll just show you by dip drawing a rectangle. So I'm not sure what layer this is working on now. It's working on the text layer. You can add layers by doing this little icon down here. So I'm now on a new layer and I can fill this. So the fill tool is here, hiding behind the gradient. So I'll just get the paint bucket and I'll click fill in here and it will fill with whatever color is on there. So there's also this, which is quite cool, modes that you can put on layers. So there's a whole list of different modes that you can apply. So you just click on normal and then use the cursor key to go down the list and you'll see that the image, my rectangle is reacting to which mode I put it in and it's creating a change. So it's effectively kind of showing you the layers through each other. So you can do that to any layer, you can do it with text, you can do it with people, you can do it with images. So it, it allows you to blend in a more interesting way. So that's quite nice. So I'm going to leave that on that lighter colour mode. Okay, so you can apply it to anything. So I'll show you and I can apply it to the girl. I just go down, I can change it so that you can view a pattern through her face maybe. Or... So it doesn't, you might not necessarily want to do this, but it, I'm just showing you that you can do it to any layer. So I'm just going to leave it on normal. So when you're saving your work, if you haven't finished and you still need all these layers, you'll have to save it as a PSD. <coughs> so just click save as PSD. And when you open up Photopia again, you can just find that image from your drive. I don't think it's saved it yet. I think it's actually probably quite a high resolution image, that's why it's slow. So it's saving my project. Doesn't usually take that long, I think it, it must just be made of very high resolution. Maybe I made it 1500 instead of 150, I don't know, when I did the dots per inch. Okay, 
So if, if you have finished with it and you don't want to move anything around anymore, you don't want to move the girl, change the size of her, change the letters or anything like that, you do export as JPEG. And then it becomes a flat image where you won't have any of these layers anymore. It's as if you've collaged it together in real life and it's all stuck down. Just turn up the quality to the max so that you save high quality images and then click save. And then it will just save it. If you don't turn, don't just close down here without saving because this is an online editor, which means it won't save anything. As soon as you close this tab down, it's lost. So you must make sure that you save everything that you're working on.